on our constant pursuit to bring you guys the best content all year round. I've been set the challenge today of trying to catch some fish on a partially frozen lake. If I can catch anything today, I'll be delighted, but I'm gonna show you a few little tips and tricks that just by changing around, moving around, you might be able to find yourself an odd fish. I'm gonna go and show you all what I know about this sort of style of fishing. Hopefully you'll enjoy it, and hopefully we'll be holding a nice big fish very soon. Let's go and have a look. So I'm going to run you through how when you're on the bank, this one rod can cover all circumstances. So I've got it out there with the first approach on, which is the bomb and bread. So I've got an identical setup here to show you exactly what's in the water and to show you how we can adjust this during the session. Because I know when a lot of you guys are out on the bank, you're going to want to enjoy a nice session, but you don't always just want to go and chuck bomb and bread. You might want to try different techniques and the fish don't always want it like that as well. You never know on a given day what the fish are going to want. It's, I mean, it's freezing cold at the moment. So whenever I go out on the bank and it is as cold as this, or it is cold and the water's started to get some clarity, I would always say, if you can see sort of like a foot into the water, bomb and bread, has to be your winter go-to start. It's such an effective method. It's very visible. It's, it's just, there's no other bait in the water. There's nothing there. There's just these big blown up pieces of bread that if a fish is cruising past, one, they can see it, and two, they just often can't resist sucking it in because there's nothing else there. So this is always your starting method. And I mean, listen, on, on some days, it might be the only method that you ever fish, but having fished a few matches in the winter and been out on a lot of winter sessions, it always tends to be that the first hour, maybe two hours, bomb and bread is, is good. And then it's almost like the fish wake up a little bit and they they start looking for a bit of food. They start looking for that little bit of something extra and bomb and bread doesn't seem quite as effective as it was. So I put it out there now. This is the first cast of the day and I'm going to show you the setup. It's really easy. Everything today is based around winter style fishing so everything needs to be soft and balanced first of all my rod i've got a 10 foot superior sl for me the softness of this rod is what makes it so amazing so it's really really forgiving when you're fishing in winter fish don't go on those big powerful charges they tend to just loll up about lunge about and you need something that is forgiving all the way through but if you do get a big fish has a little bit of power in that last bit which is why i've gone for the 10 foot sl you know nine foot rods are very good i always think when i'm on a commercial um, in the summer and I'm short chucking, they can be great. But just in winter, when I want a little bit more range, like probably up to about 30 meters, I can use this rod and it'll cover everything I want to do. I've got my trusty extremity on my 10 foot SL. I don't think this has ever come off this rod. It's, uh, it's my go-to reel for this rod. And I've got a nice light main line on here. I've got 020 main line, which is a five pound. And the reason I've got a relatively light main line is because we're not going to be fishing with massive heavy feeders or massive heavy bombs. We're going to be using quite light gear. And if the line on the reel is too thick, it won't peel off nicely on the cast. So I want to cast this, bo this bomb and bread probably about 30 meters today. So I've only got a 20 gram bomb on and I don't want to have big six or eight pound line because I just won't get it out there. And the reason I've got a 20 gram bomb on is because I want to use the ICM system. So with the ICM system, I've got complete flexibility with this one rod. Okay, the first method is bomb and bread. We're then gonna look at a, a feeder on this method as well. And then we're gonna finish up with a loose fed line with corn so we can use this for all those methods. We've literally got one rod that we can use for everything, which is why it's such a nice, simple setup. So I've got the 20 gram bomb on there and I've got a, an ICM bead at the bottom. So it just sort of fits into that hole. It's free running, but it fits into that hole, which just means when the bread is sat up from the bomb like this and the fish picks it up, 
it's effectively fixed in that moment. As soon as it goes, as soon as it starts running, it's a free running bomb. But because it sits in the end of the bomb, the bread is actually fixed at that point, which means the fish can hook itself against that bomb, which is really important. I won't use the 10 gram bomb for my bomb and bread. It's too light. I might use the 10 gram bomb when we're fishing with corn later, and we'll talk about that a bit later. But for me, the 20 gram, it just means that it can sit like that, boof, wallop, rod round, hopefully a carp or an F1 on. And that's really important. I've got a, a 12 inch hook length here. I've got a quite a nice balanced hook length. I haven't gone for anything too heavy. I've got 014 AccuPower, and then I've got a 14 KKM hook, not a KKH because I want quite a light hook because I'm fishing with bread. I don't want that heavier hook on the, on the line. So if you can imagine, this is gonna pop up like this. Now, I've tied a quick stop on there. And one thing that's very important when you're fishing with bomb and bread is to have a nice long hair on this quick stop. The bread will swell up a lot on this and you need a little bit of movement on there. I've played around with this a lot. Some You could have an even longer hair so the bread was effectively blown right up but I've just found that that isn't that effective. I find that actually I want the bread almost sort of blown up in and around the hook because then when the fish sucks in that almost ball of bread it can hook itself against it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really straightforward. Got with me a, a punch kit here. I think a punch kit is absolutely brilliant. It's so easy. I always carry it in winter. And I've got a slice of bread in here. For me, the 8mm is the size to go to for most carp and F1s. If I was fishing for maybe small F1s and small carp, I might consider 6mm. But to be honest, when there's a chance of in the winter, there's always a chance of catching those bigger carp. I don't know why. There's possibly double figure carp in here. So, you know, it seems like those fish pick out the bait. So I want a nice big visible bait. So three punches, literally just gonna punch that out. And then, so into the punch, pop it out in the little side pocket. And I'm gonna do that three times. So I've got three pieces of bread, often, I actually punch out sort of 10 or 15 so I'm, I'm all ready to go there because you can actually keep this kit sealed so you don't have to worry about the bread drying out. And then I'll just put these on the on the stop for you can see, see what they look like. So I've got my sort of straight, uh, it's not a baiting needle, it's a spike really that goes in the in the quick stop from the floating tools. Push it into your quick stop and then we'll just put all three pieces of of this eight mil bread. And I'm using quite a thick, just using a thick uh, Warburton sliced bread. I found that probably the best one to be fair. And those three slices on there, but you can see there's still plenty of movement on that hair for them to swell up. But effectively look, that bread, if I can untangle that for you there, that bread is gonna sit up off the bottom like that, big and visible and all blown up and a perfect bait for a carp. So let's see if we can get an early one on that and then we'll have a look at some other methods that you can use on this one rod. So an early one for the bomb and bread, which is absolutely great. Like I was saying earlier, that bomb and bread's brilliant because you're not affecting your peg in any way. You're, you're effectively just putting the bait right there and if a fish wants to feed, and it is, I mean, it is freezing. So, you know, obviously a fish has just felt, yeah, fancy a bit of Lee's bread there. And I'll tell you now, I'm grateful for this soft rod because, you know, on a day like today, you can feel, it feels like it could be a good fish, this. You know, you don't know what sort of fish it's gonna be, but it just shows how powerful. I mean, there's no other bait in the water at the moment at all. So just like I was saying, how big and visual it is. Really nice. I've just got the clutch set really lightly on my reel. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to test that light hook length too much. Look at the bend in the rod. This is why it's so important, you know, to have such a soft rod when you're fishing in winter. So I've got a 10 foot SL here. And the beauty with this rod is, it's still got power here, right? So in this point here, look, you can still see I've got the power because this is a big fish this is. 
So like, it feels like a carp more than an F1. Um, you know, so it's a good fish. I've got the clutch set nice and light, but there's so much forgiveness in the rod that it means all these big lunges on this light hook length. You know, you can still be in control of the fish and not worry about, you know, unnecessary hook pulls or line break. You know, if a fish comes off, it comes off, but you're trying to give yourself the best chance. And I always feel when you've got a nice soft rod, you've got that. It's a beautiful action on it. I'll tell you what, I've got a feeling this is a good fish. You know, it's, uh, it feels like a nice fish. And there is some nice carp in this lake here, so a brilliant start for that for that bomb and bread. Like I said before, if you can nick one or two off it, look, there he is. Look at that. Whoa, <laughs> what a start to the session. That's absolutely fantastic. He is definitely pushing double figures. And he's immaculate. What fantastic condition. That is incredible. I'm going to show you close up here because I tell you what, you don't catch many carp <coughs> on commercial fisheries these days that are in such amazing condition as that. What a beautiful carp that is. Look at that. He is special. He's got a massive mouth. Look at the size of his mouth. He sucked those three bits of bread in, no problem at all. What an amazing start to this session on an, I mean, it's still minus two degrees and I've got a calf in my hands. What a great start. So after that great start on bread and a nice big fish, like I said before, as the day wears on a little bit, sometimes a change and in introducing some bait can be really good. And I think that's best done with, in deeper water, with something a little bit more compact. So I really like a, a little pellet feeder when I'm chucking out into the deep water. I can be sure that all my baits get into the bottom and my hook bait is almost like perfectly presented because I'm not expecting loads of bites, but a pellet feeder could be really effective for that. You can also chuck a little method or something like that as well. But today I'm gonna to have a go with a pellet feeder just to show you how I can change that. So on the same rod, just taking the bomb off, I'm just gonna slip on the 25 gram pellet feeder there. And these are beautiful little feeders. 25 gram, again, I can chuck this out into the middle if I want to, just push the the top back on. Now, I need a little short hook length for method feeder, so I've just, you know, taken my uh, main hook length off, that longer hook length, and I'm just going to slip on a three inch hook length that I've tied up here, 18 to 014. And, I mean, I could fish a wafter or something like that, but I'm loose feeding a little bit of corn, and I'm trying to sort of get across to you guys that, you know, you can do everything nice and simple with your day. So, Along with some bread, I've brought some micros and some corn with me, and I've sort of like stopped at that. I've said like, that's going to be my bait for this session. That's what I'm going to try to make work today. Um, on a winter's day, you don't often have the time to make, oh, it's, this isn't right. I need to change the pellets. I need to change this because let's be honest, if you can catch half a dozen decent fish in a day, you're probably having a good day, especially in the winter, unless you're on that absolute flyer peg and you'll probably catch seven or eight on bomb and bread anyway. So, you know, when you're on a peg where you might need to want, make something happen, corn can be as good as anything when it's freezing cold in the winter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hair rig onto this, got a little quick stop on here, and I'm just gonna hair rig on, not, not a massive piece of corn. I don't, don't want a big piece of corn. I'm just looking, I'm trying to pick a nice bit of this small F1 corn. I've opened a couple of tins for today because I will start loose feeding that in a bit. And there, I've just put that on the spike. You probably noticed there, I put it the other way round to what a lot of people might do because when you put your, your corn in that way, actually the quick stop itself sits beautifully in that nice soft bit at the top. And then also where your line is moving about at the bottom, it's in a, it's around the sort of harder shell of the top, which means it's, it's not gonna cut and move about. I found when it's the other way, moves about a lot so just like that i get really good presentation and then i'm just going to take my pellets squeeze them gently into the feed i'm not going to squeeze them hard i do actually want these pellets to come out so a little gentle squeeze almost to the lip and then i'm just going to lay the corn on the lip and then put a few pellets in over the top again a gentle squeeze i'm not going to go not really whacking them in i do want these pellets to almost like 
blow up and come out of the feeder and calve my corn perfectly presented there on that first bit of bait. So I'm really happy with that. And what that means is I'll probably clip this up on the bomb and bread rod. I haven't clipped that up. So obviously I'm gonna clip this up now and I'll just make my first cast a comfortable distance into the middle of the lake, into that open space in the lake. I'll put my clip on and I'll try and build a peg for the next hour, probably chucking like, probably every 10 minutes. I won't, I won't leave it in for hours upon time. I'll probably just have a chuck in every sort of 10, 12 minutes, try and build up a little bit of bait in that area and just see if those fish are attracted to a bit of a bait. But again, it just shows how simple it is to change that bomb rod and all of a sudden, I'm starting to fish with a, a pellet feeder or again, you could even put a little method feeder or whatever you like on. So I'm really happy that this pellet feeder has it's thrown up a few fish now, you know. It's a little bit slow. I probably came off the bread a little bit early. But the pellet feeder, after about an hour, has just started, they started to get an odd indication. And I've had four now, which is really good. I'm really happy with that. This is the, this is the fourth one. Just trying to be sure that it was the right method. And I mean, it's just great. They're all F1s as well. It's bizarre. The early fish were carp on the bomb and bread, which is almost to be expected, but it just goes to show those F1s, they want a little bit of food. They want a little bit of bait. They don't, you know, they don't, they just, I'm not so sure that they're quite as bomb and bready as, as the car are. I just think they love that, those little bits of pellets, but you can see they're nice, again, like I said before, soft rod, you know, you're fishing in winter. I've only got an 18 hook on, so you still want to be able to pull relatively hard to keep all the tension there. You don't want the fish bouncing off. That's the most important thing. So, but there's some lovely F1s in here. Just feel it like trying to get itself down into the bottom in by that weed. Here he comes, look. Lovely F1s, absolutely beautiful fish. So, like I said, it's that's four now, which is which is really good. They all add up, the weight all adds up. They are so cold, the fish are so cold today, but you can see there, look, there's the corn coming out of his mouth on that pellet feeder. It's really good. I'm gonna I'm going to try and catch a few more on this over the next hour or so, but hopefully I can sneak one on the, uh, I can sneak a few on the corn late and it'll be a really good day to be fair. So really happy with that. It's, uh, it's looking good. So pellet feed has been okay. There was obviously a few fish come to it. It took a little bit of a time to get going, but two or three F1s there in that middle period. And I feel like if I stayed on that, I could probably keep catching a few, but the final part of how I might approach this sort of open water swim is, is really important because up until like two, two and a half hours in, I've not fed anything anywhere else. I've just been fishing my bread and then I've been fishing with that pellet feeder. Now, from this point on, I want to start being a little bit more aggressive on a line. I want to start introducing some bait. So, like I said to you before, I opened two tins of F1 corn you know, I'm not going to be stingy with it. I think like a couple of tins, you want to be introducing some feed and, and almost gambling a little bit on a closer line, trying to encourage a few fish to come. So what I'm going to start doing now, now we're sort of halfway through the session, is I'm just going to fill my pouch up with like a dozen pieces of corn. I absolutely love this pouch because it's got a nice little flat bottom. So Corn can be a bit naughty sometimes. It can spread out a little bit. It can fly out a bit. So I'm not going to push this to the limit. I'm almost going to just try and keep this corn nicely grouped. Probably about 16, 18 metres, I would say. Yeah, something like that. Maybe about 18 metres. And I'm going to do that twice. So 12 bits of corn twice, almost exactly on the same spot. And I'll probably do that every sort of like five, six minutes, something like that. So effectively, I'm starting to rein in corn. Now corn, unlike pellets, corn, there's nothing to corn. It, you know, if you just mush it up, there's just a lot of juice there. It's, you know, there's not loads of food value in that corn for a fish. So I do feel like it's a good bait to be a little bit more aggressive with in winter. And what I'll do is I'll probably feed that for a good half an hour or so, see how it's going on the pellet feeder, and then, I'll look at changing. So again, you know, it's up to you. If you're in a competition and you might want to have multiple rods set up, but if you just want to have a nice day out, then the one rod can do it. So 
The corn approach is dead simple. I'm just gonna take this pellet feeder off here. And I always like to fish a nice little bomb when I'm fishing in winter. You can see today there's not a breath of wind. Now, if it was windy, I'd be putting the 20 gram bomb back on, nice and heavy, chucking over the top. But experience has told me that when it's like this, I don't wanna be crashing a bomb over the top. The fish definitely know that that's going on. So that's why I love this little 10 grammer. Just gonna push that 10 grammer on like that. Absolutely brilliant. And then I've got some foot long hook lengths tied, very similar to what I started with. I feel like a foot's a nice length. It's a, it's a length that I can go out and I feel like the fish will come to. And I've got small hooks and line on that. I've got an 18 KKM there and it's got 014 on and it's got a quick stop on again. So the idea being that Effectively, I can just quick stop a piece of corn on a nice small hook, exactly how I showed you with the pellet feeder. I'm gonna do that again for you here. And this, this presentation is gonna be great. And it just means that I can literally pick this rod up and chuck this little bomb nicely over the top. It's gonna to make a nice little plop. And I can see if there's any fish in the peg. And I'll probably, after about 30 minutes, I might give it a 10, 15 minute period on that bomb line, see any fish have arrived. You'll soon know when they've arrived. You'll start getting indications, liners, and there'll be evidence of fish mooching around your corn. If you don't get those indications, unlike when you're fishing long with like bread and that, where you don't tend to get many indications, if you don't get those indications on that bomb and corn, it's not ready. You can wind it in, take that 10 gram bomb off, and put your pellet feeder back on for another half an hour or so. But it's so easy and so quick to change with the flexibility of this method. It just means I've got a nice line there where hopefully I can have a bit of a grandstand finish. Maybe if I catch five or six fish there, I'm gonna be looking at a great day's fishing. So, you know, this is why having the versatility and the flexibility within this setup is so important. Well, I'll tell you what, you, you just never know with fishing. Fishing doesn't half throw up some surprises. The morning session was was steady. A couple of carp and an F1 and just this sunshine on the water maybe. You know, the lake's still half frozen. You know, it's not warm, but a bit of light. This is on the corn line now and, you know, I caught one quite quickly and chucked it back in it's gone straight round again so I mean if you know a great finish here on corn after you know I caught quite a few fish on that feeder it just it just seemed to be good but I felt like maybe there was a chance of a finish on the corn and I've had two in two chucks I mean there's only three minutes on the clock this time and these are the fish these good f1s look at the stamp of that that's a bigger stamp for definite and uh, they just love that that loose fed approach, it might be pellet sometime, it might be corn sometime, it's just popped off then in the net, but look at that. Brilliant stamp F1s on three completely different methods today. I really hope you've enjoyed what we've looked at today because it just goes to show that you can have a fantastic day's fishing in winter, one rod, three different approaches, fantastic. It really is good. Get out there, give it a go for yourself as always. See you next time.